any further ado, I'm going to introduce Nancy Maxwell. We are so excited. She's a first time visitor to Fort Worth Genealogical, although she did work here at one time. She is the librarian in the genealogy department at uh, Grapevine. She also kind of facilitates the Grapevine name droppers. She helps get some speakers and she's spoken there lots of times. And if you've never been to one of theirs, they meet for about two hours and have some really good lectures. She uh, got her bachelor's in English at Cal State Fullerton. Are you from the name? I'm from Massachusetts. Oh, okay. From California. okay. Then she got her uh, master's of library science at USC in California. Then she got smart in Texas and got her uh, master's in history, and a double master in history at UNT Denton. And, and she worked on a doctorate in history. So you are the most well-rounded librarian. <laughs> We'll have to be calling her doctor before you know <laughs> And uh, she's also written a couple books on some Arkansas genealogy, and she writes for periodicals. Won't you please help me welcome a very qualified speaker tonight on Percy. And if you don't know about it, here's your chance. <coughs> Index 
It's the largest subject index for genealogy. Uh, it was created by the um, uh, Allen County Public Library Genealogy Center uh, in 1986 in Book Horn. It indexes over 11,000 uh, genealogical periodical titles, and it includes uh, over 3,000 periodicals that are no longer being published. So that really makes them a very valuable resource. Um, uh, Percy is not, uh, it does not um, index uh, in, uh, every name in these periodicals. Uh, it only indexes names if they appear in the title, if they are the subject of an article. Um, so uh, in some instances, uh, you might need to uh, browse uh, periodicals in order to find that information. And, and uh, with the index and with the um, online availability, which I'll be talking about later, um, that will prove to be very helpful. Um, I'd like to give uh, a little bit of history uh, of Percy. Um, it was um, said it was begun in uh, 1986 by the Genealogy Center at the Fort Wayne uh, Library. Um, they first started publishing in uh, hardcover volumes um, uh, periodicals from 1847 up to 1985. And uh, then in 1980, uh, in 1996, uh, they went from a single volume to two volumes, which had gotten so large that they created a families volume and a places volume uh, for one year. And that lasted just a couple of years before um, Ancestry uh, acquired the rights to put uh, Percy on uh, in their database. And uh, in 2004, uh, Heritage Quest Online, or ProQuest, uh, acquired uh, uh, Percy from Ancestry. And it was part of Heritage Quest for many years. And uh, it is now uh, uh, available on the Find My Past uh, website, which I'll be talking about a little later on. So there's a little history there on, on uh, Percy and how it came to be. Um, About 2009, uh, when Percy was still a part of Heritage Quest, um, it became the Percy Archive, which meant that the uh, Allen County Library was no longer adding new material to that. I believe they, they might have been in negotiations with, with another company for uh, uh, making it available elsewhere. Uh, but it was, still, it was still usable, they were just not adding new content. And by 2013, uh, Percy was acquired by Find My Past. Uh, it is a, a, a British database. Uh, uh, are uh, any of you familiar with Find My Past? Some, okay. Find My Past is a, um, it is a, a British database, but it does have a lot of, of US content. Uh, they are now the sole distributors of Percy. And I'm, I'm going to be, uh, talking about being able to access Find My Past, even though it's a subscription website, you can still search Percy, uh, the Percy Index for free. Um, the following year, in 2014, uh, Find My Past uh, partnered with the uh, free website archive, the Internet Archive. Are you all familiar with the Internet Archive? Um, they've partnered with that to um, uh, put uh, publications on that are uh, in the public domain. I'll be uh, showing you that a little later on too when we talk about Find My Past. And uh, in 2016, uh, the Percy Ar Archive uh, uh, was discontinued uh, with Heritage Quest Online and became a, a permanent part of Find My Past. So uh, Percy has had quite an, an interesting history and um, it is uh, really uh, an, an invaluable resource for locating periodicals. Um, the, uh, as I mentioned, it is a subject index uh, to articles and, and genealogical periodicals. Uh, the entries are arranged by location and by record type. And 
by surname as subject. Surnames are considered subjects in Percy, and they can only be searched as, as subjects. They also include a large number of articles on methodology, on how to uh, conduct different types of research. Uh, there are over, it's actually now over 2.7 million entries um, from uh, historical, genealogical, and ethnic publications. So uh, their, their content is, is, is quite voluminous. Uh, what can you find in Percy? Uh, you can find biographical sketches of uh, uh, ancestors or their friends, neighbors, or associates. Uh, you can find transcribed naturalization indexes, probate records, church records, school records. Uh, you can find histories of places or organizations and uh, other kinds of, of buried treasures, perhaps uh, things you weren't even aware of, uh, may show up in Percy as well, that might you know, otherwise be difficult uh, to locate or, or maybe even unknowable uh, at all. Um, so as I mentioned, the index is uh, it's an extremely valuable finding aid. Some of the subjects in Percy. These are the subjects that are covered. There are 22 different subject headings. And these are the various types of records uh, that you can search. Uh, you can specify a particular one. Um, and uh, uh, use any other number of filters that uh, Percy has to offer. You can customize your searches that way. Um, why should I use Percy? Well, there are a lot of good reasons. Um, it's been estimated that, that you can be missing up to 30% of your research leads if you don't check periodicals. Um, that's pretty significant. And um, even at my own library, I'm, I'm trying to find different ways to entice people to use the periodicals more. Uh, Rayfine has uh, well over 700 or 800 volumes of, of genealogical periodicals. And I don't think they're used nearly as much as they could be. So um, uh, I, I really encourage their use. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can find things there that you might not find anywhere else. And uh, Percy is also a key to um, what is called orphan data. Um, that's uh, information relating to you know, locations separate from the periodicals they appear in. As I, I mentioned before about uh, an article about an, an ancestor who lived in, in an eastern state county appears in a Midwestern uh, society periodical. Um, uh, Percy is invaluable for locating those types of articles. We have Percy at Grapevine. It sits on two of our shelves like this. Um, the 1997 uh, issues are uh, over here. These are the ones where Percy had split into uh, two separate volumes. It had been in one volume for many years, and then uh, in 1996 and 97, uh, they had to split uh, the volumes by um, uh, uh, families and places because the content had grown so much. Uh, the only thing is, is it stopped printing after 1997 because it went uh, digital on uh, Ancestry. So Percy has not been published in hardcover since 1997 because it's become available in uh, other formats. And the online goes all the way back to the beginning. The online uh, person, it's so find my past, it goes oh, back to the past. beginning, it goes all the way up. Yes, yeah, it's, um, it covers everything you know, in these volumes plus everything else that's been available after that. So it is, it, it, it is voluminous, and it's going to get even more voluminous for reasons I'm going to mention. Um, here is a, uh, a sample, a sample page. Um, I wish it was a little bigger so you could see it better. Um, but the, uh, the typical book entry, uh, this is from a family's volume. It is arranged alphabetically uh, 
by the family, the family name right here. And then uh, if the person's first name is given, they will include that first name or if it's a husband and wife, they'll include their names as well. Uh, they'll, that just identifies the family a little more clearly. Um, any pertinent dates uh, that, uh, you know, that appear you know, in the, uh, in the uh, article are given. And that uh, country and state or province uh, is also given. So it pretty much identifies a family with the name and date and the place. Um, it gives over here, and it's kind of hard to, and it's kind of hard to see, but um, the print isn't much bigger in the book either. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's, it's, it's just, it's just so, there, there's just so much in it. Um, over here, you see, these are our four letter abbreviations for the journal that the article appears in. Um, they have a, a list of the journal abbreviations in the front, so you can check and see what uh, you know, CACR stands for. If you flip to the front, you get the full name of the journal. And then it gives um, the volume of the journal that the article appears in, uh, the number, the uh, number, the uh, month, and year of the issue. One thing Percy does not index is page numbers. Uh, I am not sure why they do that. I haven't been able to, to find out why. Uh, but it is no handicap in terms of acquiring the article. Um, the next thing I'd like to show you is a page from the locations or the, uh, the places volume. This is helpful to know if you're, if you're using the hardcover volume. Um, Um, for the, uh, the places volume, uh, it is um, alphabetical by the state. Oops, okay. wrong button. I keep wanting to point this at the screen. I'm sorry. Um, uh, it's arranged uh, alphabetically by state and then within the state by county. Uh, then it will indicate the record type, you know, what, what type of article it is, and then it gives you the title of the article, here, any you know, identifying information that makes it uh, you know, uh, a little more specific, and then uh, the same thing on this side is with the, the family's one. It gives you the journal abbreviation, the volume, uh, the issue number, and the month and year. And that's very helpful to know if you are looking to get an article through the interlibrary loan or through uh, the uh, electronic public library. So that is what the published volumes look like. Um, I've mentioned the types of things that are in Percy. I'd like to mention now what is not indexed. Um, Percy, uh, because it was a subject index, it does not index every name in every article. Um, it doesn't include family group sheets, ancestral charts, queries, uh, things like that. It does not have any information about society memberships. Um, it does not uh, index book and computer software reviews. Uh, it doesn't index surname journals uh, and newsletters, and it does not include page numbers. And uh, like I said, not having the page numbers is, is not a handicap in terms of getting the article. So I know we're, we're used to indicating that when you're requesting for interlibrary loan if you want certain pages, I want pages five through eight. Uh, they don't provide that in person and it's not even uh, really necessary. So it is not included in that index. Um, now I'd like to talk about uh, Percy on Find My Past. Um, just a, a little background, I find back, getting background information is very helpful in terms of uh, understanding the source. Um, uh, Percy on Find My Past, it's a joint venture between Find My Past and uh, the um, Allen, County, Allen County Library's Genealogy Center. Uh, uh, Find My Past is a subscription website, however, you do not have to have a membership to search the index. Uh, you can do that for free. 
Um, and uh, you'll find out that same kind of information that you, know, you would find if you were looking in the book. Um, uh, one really exciting thing that Find My Past is doing is they are now starting to digitize certain articles or certain journals. Um, those are, um, unfortunate, well, unfortunately or unfortunately, um, you do have to be a paid member to see the images on the website. Um, and the images are from journals that are out of uh, uh, copyright restriction. So they're pretty early. Uh, but a lot of um, uh, well-known and well-respected genealogical publications you know, have been published uh, throughout the, the 19th and early 20th centuries. So um, those, uh, those, uh, having access to those images is really uh, invaluable. Can, uh, can, can you see those images through the library uh, system or if, through the uh, uh, Mormon Church Research Center? Yes, um, I'm going to be mentioning that later on, but yeah, uh, family history centers have uh, subscriptions to Find My Past. Um, some libraries uh, in the United States have, I'm not aware of any that do. I know we are investigating that possibility, um, but uh, I'm not aware of, of a, a particular library that, that has it, but the family history centers do. You can go there and access the images for images for free. You can just use that like you would, you know, ancestry or anything like that. Um, if um, if you choose to view them on Percy, you either have to have the subscription or you can do a pay per view. Uh, they have uh, they have rates for that. And they explain that on the website. Uh, where you don't have to have a membership, but you just you know pay as you pay as you, you know, as you view the article. Um, and they explain on the website how you can do that if you choose not to go for a subscription uh, and you still want to access it without going out somewhere. Um, uh, it, it's really interesting how they, uh, how Find My Past uh, uh, gets, these, uh, gets these journals out there. Um, what they do is they sign contracts with individual genealogical societies to get permission uh, to publish their journals, either you know, back issues and current issues. And they, they work out individually with each genealogical society. Um, uh, the, um, the society uh, you know, gives them permission and uh, that you know, allows the you know, Allen County Public Library to submit the articles for uh, Inclusion on the Find My Past website. I'll be talking a little more about that too in, in, in a, a short while. Um, as you mentioned, you can access Percy uh, through Family History Centers, uh, through subscribing libraries, and through a personal subscription. Uh, or uh, you can even do the pay per view if you're inclined to uh, to go in that direction. So there, there are a number of ways you can uh, you can access not only the index but the images. Um, this is uh, from the Find My Past website. Um, on the, the home page, you can choose uh, which area you're you're interested in. If you're looking at Sorry, I keep, I want to press the, um, the little red dot. Um, you select, uh, first you have to select newspapers and periodicals. And when you click on that, uh, it will take you to the newspapers page. And then you can choose from the collections. The, uh, and uh, the third one, of course, is Percy. So when you check Percy, uh, click on Percy, it will take you to the uh, entryway into the, uh, the Percy Index. Um, you can see here they have the various filters that you can uh, narrow your search by. Um, they say it's, uh, it's best to start researching by entering a location or keyword in the, uh, 
the uh, where and uh, what else boxes. Um, you don't have to begin like that. It's just something they suggest. You can uh, choose uh, uh, whatever type of research technique you want to use. Um, you can narrow your search results um, by, uh, by last name, country, state, county, town, uh, subject, um, article, keyword. Uh, you can adapt it to any, uh, you know, any one of those filters. There's also, there's a couple more that, uh, that uh, filters that you can search by, and those are by periodical, publisher, and publication year. Uh, if you're interested in a certain periodical, uh, you can search you know, issues that are very of a specific periodical. Okay, these are the um, search filters, the search filters you can use. Um, most people are interested in the, um, of course, the, the, the name and the place information too, as well as, uh, as well as subject. But you can also use article keyword, uh, which is, um, uh, is, is helpful uh, in terms of, of uh, looking for words that might not appear you know, in uh, the other search filters. So uh, you do have quite a few options uh, when you're looking, uh, you know, for uh, information in cursive, and you can modify your search according accordingly. And uh, uh, if you don't find something under one search, you can come back and modify it and uh, try it another way. Um, you know, of course, we're most interested in searching for people, so. Um,
uh, record types that, that, that Percy lists. Um, and what the how to's do is they, they will search citations about research methods, and uh, uh, you can uh, type your search term into the uh, how to article field, and uh, uh, you can do a search for uh, various types of, of uh, genealogical methodologies. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can also search periodical uh, titles. Um, there is a periodical field, um, and it will provide uh, access to detailed information about periodicals for a specific title. Um, it will tell you what the uh, Allen County Public Library holds. Remember, they have uh, it's over, uh, well over 8,000 titles. Um, it will list uh, all the, the known repositories, other libraries holding those types of articles. Uh, you might find one that's, that's close to you. Uh, if that's the case, then you know you, know, you can go there and, and, and use those resources. Um, and um, it, uh, it even follows the same periodical through a title change. If, if, the, uh, if the periodical's title changes sometime through the years, uh, it's still listed under its original title. So you don't have to worry about periodical changes. Um, and uh, you can browse through you know, individual articles if you want to browse through issues of a certain journal. Uh, you have the option to do that. You can just click on the volume, number, or date of issue. And you can just browse through the periodical. So that's very handy, too, if you're interested in a particular periodical. Um, now I'd like to mention um, how uh, you can get article copies. Um, there are uh, various ways you can do that. Um, Percy, uh, Find My Past is in the process of, of digitizing. Um, so uh, they, uh, I believe they add uh, images every month. And uh, the number is going to vary uh, you know, depending on, on what they have. Um, if uh, an article is not linked to an image, um, you, um, there are a number of ways that you can access that article. Uh, you can contact the society uh, if you choose. There's contact information included with the periodical title. Uh, you can search your local library's online catalog and see if they carry that, uh, that particular journal or that particular issue. Um, you can search the um, uh, fantastic uh, WorldCat uh, catalog. Um, and uh, you can find out that way who owns a particular title. And not only that, uh, but you can put in your zip code and it will arrange the holding libraries uh, in proximity to your location. It will show the nearest one first. So that is, uh, that's pretty handy too. Uh, if, if you're looking to, uh, you know, if you're planning a research trip, uh, it can be uh, a very handy thing to, uh, to search. You also have the option of doing interlibrary loan. Um, anyone who has a library card to their library uh, can uh, request uh, uh, an article to be uh, uh, photocopied. Um, at our library, it's done through the reference desk. Uh, you can also do it online. You do need to have a library card to the uh, library you're requesting from, so there is, there is that particular restriction. And some allow you even to make your uh, request to the uh, to the ILL people online. Um, uh, that possibility is available for uh, for grapevine card holders. Uh, they can also just make their request online too if they don't want to, you know, print out a copy of the of the sheet. So uh, interlibrary loan is always an option. Um, you can also order from the On County Public Library. Um, and uh, you can check online if it's an older publication, perhaps it's been digitized. Um, if, you, uh, if you do decide to order from Allen County, uh, they have room on their order sheet, which is that example right here. Um, they have room on this form for up to six requests. The fee is uh, $7 where the U.S. for one article or six. That's, that's been their standing fee for years. And um, uh, 
and you have to prepay if you're going to, you know, we pushed it from the um, uh, Allen County Library. Um, you can try it through your, your own libraries, they're free. I just mentioned this uh, because it is an available option. And on Find My Past, they do provide a link to uh, the uh, Allen County Public Library where you can you know, uh, download one of those forms and fill it out. So I just want to let you know about that as an option. Um, now I'd like to mention something about Percy and uh, the Internet Archive, which I had uh, mentioned briefly before. Uh, right now they have almost uh, 1,200 items on um, archive.org. They are mostly older uh, historical society publications. Um, they uh, started adding in November 2014. They're at May 2017 right now. Uh, I don't know how frequently they are um, uh, added to archive.org. Um, but um, this is a, uh, a chance to look at these digital images uh, for free. This is one place where you can look at articles for free, but you have to remember they are older uh, periodicals, um, you know, late 19th uh, century, early 20th century, uh, but they include some very major publications, uh, the old and respected genealogy publications. Um, and um, it is uh, uh, something I've, I've learned recently, I've not been aware that this was available, and I uh, just wanted to let you know because um, the Internet Archive is a free website and you can access it um, uh, anywhere, you know, at home or you know, on the road on your laptop. Um, it's a, a, a chance to browse through uh, or search these old periodicals. So that's very exciting. Uh, here's an example. This is a page from the archive.org uh, Percy collection. Um, uh, you, can, uh, you can view these items a number of ways. Uh, you can sort it by uh, news this and especially about that. That just tells you how many people have looked at it. Um, but you can uh, do a, a search by, uh, you can arrange it by title, then uh, list them alphabetically, uh, by the date, uh, they were, um, they were published. Creator isn't really that uh, critical to genealogy. It's mostly it's the, uh, the, the, the title is probably the most, uh, of the most interest. And uh, as over here, you can narrow it down to by you know, journals published in uh, certain years. And uh, when you click on a title, it'll take you, you know, to the, the image of that particular title. And then you can search it, or you can browse through it page by page. Um, it's a, uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, uh, it's a pretty neat uh, uh, way to do searching when it's early periodicals for free. Um, I'd like to mention how um, how these periodicals are, are digitized. Um, it, it really is. Um, it really gives you a greater perspective on what it takes to get these articles online for us to see. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Genealogical Society uh, you know, will approach Find My Past and uh, indicate an interest. Uh, then uh, somebody from Find My Past meets with them, uh, they talk things over, get, make all the necessary arrangements, and they sign a contract with the society, uh, and they're all individualized. Um, and uh, at that time, when a contract is, is, is all signed and finalized, uh, Find My Past guarantees uh, uh, images to be published within 12 months. So uh, they will even let the society know when their uh, uh, publications will be uh, available. And then Find My Past sends lists every month to uh, the Allen County Public Library and um, what they do is they go and they pull their journals off the shelves, they go downstairs to the basement where they have this uh, wonderful scanning uh, uh, capability, and the scanning equipment has actually been provided by the Internet Archive, so this is really high-powered stuff. Um, uh, anything, uh, as I mentioned, that's in the public domain uh, also goes to the Internet Archive. 
So it not only goes to Thursday, it goes to uh, archive.org. Um, after uh, the um, items have been scanned, uh, uh, Allen County puts them back on the shelves. Um, apparently, uh, some societies have thought that since their stuff is digitized, they no longer need their hard copies and they'll toss them. Um, uh, I personally don't know of, of uh, uh, you know, any incidents of that happening, uh, but I, I'm guessing it has. Um, but Allen County doesn't do that. They will save their periodicals, and when they get enough issues, complete issues, they buy them, they put them on the shelf. So um, uh, those uh, the, the periodicals will be available in print indefinitely. Uh, and then uh, Allen County will send their uh, uh, most up-to-date version of Percy every month. They have staff that um, uh, go through each of these articles. They read it, they decide on the subject, they decide on the appropriate keywords. And all that information is sent to Find My Pass, which puts it on their Percy page. So that's what it takes to get these um, items up on uh, uh, Find My Pass. Um, <coughs> uh, that um, pretty much um, concludes my, my talk. Um, I was uh, um, I was wondering is it um, is it possible to uh, to do a demonstration of uh, search of, of find my pass? I have a, I have a personal subscription, so I would be glad to. We don't to do if it if it's possible. Have, um, Wi-Fi really reliable in this room. Right, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's quite all right. I was just uh, offering to do that if it was if it was possible. Okay. It might be we could try it. That, that's that's a problem. We don't promise it in advance to its unreliability, but we could try. I mean, it'll be a work for it all. Okay. If it if it does, um, I I wanted to do this um, at the uh, at the uh, conclusion because. I wanted to get through all of the information about Percy first, and uh, then, then I, I show it to you, and then there's a whole lot more. I think there's a whole lot more. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Page. It, it's saying this page can't be displayed, uh, so it's not giving me it doesn't have to. interaction right now. Can you ask your question? Yes, I, don't, I don't think it will. I'm sorry. Uh, Wait, that's a no, no problem. When Allen County started the, this project and getting all this. At that time, were there European journals, British or other, that Allen County held that they got into the index? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have. Um, they do have some uh, some foreign uh, publications. Not a whole lot. I don't know how many they have. What what percentage they have compared to the um, American ones? Well, it's just odd that Find My Pass would do it since it's by it, since it was, um, since it's, since they're more mostly British or. Mm -hmm. Well, the next one, Percy is an index of all the holdings at Allen County. So if those included, you know, uh, uh, foreign periodicals, they would just be, uh, they would be indexed along with the. Well, I just wondered if only Allen County could control it, right? Yes. Yes. So yeah. This is this is a total Allen County Allen County project. They have a they have a uh, a relationship with Find My Pass. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, sole control of Percy between them and Allen County. But I'm glad it's free that you can still get it. Yeah, the index is the index is free. You can you can search that without uh, without a subscription. Only if you want to access images do you need you need either a subscription or go to Family History Center or do the pay for credit, no pay for view credit.
this organization, this, you're talking about periodical puddling, are you not? I'm sorry, sir? When you're talking about all of this is just periodicals. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, these are our, our genealogical society publications. Okay. Yeah, they could put the genealogical society, historical society uh, publications. Yeah, they're, they're all periodicals. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Allen County remains the uh, physical periodical repository. Yes. Yes, yes, it does, and it's. I have yet to make a visit there, but it is. Uh, I, I hear all the time. It is a must see. So you should definitely put it on your bucket list to visit the the Allen County uh, Genealogy Center. Uh, it's um, like I mentioned earlier. It's, it's next in size only to the Family History Library. Their their holdings are just incredible. That's on my bucket list. <laughs> it's on mine, too. Yes, sir. And a follow-up, sure. if I may. Um, if I understood your closing remarks, um, the uh, database uh, search, the search for the uh, digital database that you can search for you to find my past is updated by Allen County. How often is that, in other words? Well, um, every... Um, Allen County sends uh, their uh, index work to By My Past. They do it, I believe they do it monthly. Monthly. Yeah, every month it's, uh, every month it's updated. I think and By My Past updates the website monthly. Um, I'm not sure how much time uh, uh, it takes for them to, uh, to digitize, but that's the that's the, the, the schedule as far as I can determine. But it's, it's a constant thing, so you know, every month there's new material being added. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Hi, on one of your um, deals it says search OCLC WorldCat.org. What is OCLC? Um, well, OCLC is, is the, uh, the, the company that owns WorldCat. But it, it's, it stands for Ohio, uh, Online catalog library classification. Oh. Uh, what it is, that's um, that, that's library lingo. We always do okay. OCLC for sure. But what it is, it's like a worldwide catalog. You know how the, the public <coughs> library has a catalog you know, that you can search? Uh, WorldCat is the public library on the world level. Um, the only the only thing is is that uh, libraries have to pay to be members of OCLC, but there are thousands of them. And it's, it's a free site, you just go to worldcat.org and uh, you can specify a search. And um, as I mentioned before, you can, um, uh, you can enter your zip code before you do your search and it will search for your particular item and it will list it uh, in proximity to your, your zip code. So, which is pretty neat, and especially helpful if you're, you're planning a research trip and you're making some repository stops. Uh, it's, it's helpful in a number of ways, and you can see which libraries own, you know, a particular item. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a great way to do some advanced research. Uh, advanced, can save yourself time searching another library catalog. Right. <laughs> your successes that you want to crow about, your uh, 
frustrating brick wall ancestors and they try to help you, uh, you know, through those brick walls. Um, and then in December, we have a show and tell where we encourage people to share their findings or their artifacts or documents and talk about them. Um, we get some really interesting things at, at, at show and tell. Um, I remember one time someone brought in a christening gown from like, around 1900. It was so, so awesome. Uh, so you never know what people are going to bring to share. Um, uh, I do talks uh, usually twice a year. Um, in fact, I'm doing our April one on Percy. Um, so you kind of got an advanced view. Yeah, I was gonna say, if, if this fascinates you and you want to uh, go further, she'll go in a little more in depth at great fun um, on this. I do, because I say our talks, usually they, we schedule them for an hour, hour and a half. So we start at 10.30 and we'll end it by 12. Um, and uh, our programs are on the website, our website under genealogy. Uh, you can find an event list which has a listing of all of our programs for the year. Um, if you come to our library, you can actually pick up a bookmark that lists all of our programs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a wonderful facilitator. I mean, you may have heard of her, her name is Teresa Tatirik. And uh, she is kind of a great fun uh, named office facilitator. And she prints these wonderful program bookmarks out every year, which anybody can take. You can stick it up on your fridge and you know exactly what uh, programs are going to be coming up that you might want to attend. Uh, so, uh, and I online too. Yeah, it is. It, it's online. Uh, it's online on the, the genealogy portion of the library website. Uh, if you'd like to visit our library website, it's really easy to remember. It's library at grapevinetexas.gov. Thank you. Give her another big hand. Thank you. My pleasure.